let's talk about the one that I was mentioning, that blue region. And I said when a star is dying, if it goes through that blue region, it's going to start pulsating. These are known as pulsating stars. The other term for them are variable stars, okay? Variable or pulsating. When stars are in the process of dying, they go through the instability strip. They start to pulsate or sputter and vary in brightness and size. So let's show you where the instability strip is. See here? So roughly, it's an invisible region of the HR diagram. So when the star is dying, if it goes through this portion of the instability strip, it's called RR Lyer variable. If it goes through the top portion, Cepheid variable. If it goes through this portion as it's on its way to the white dwarf, it's, the white dwarf itself pulsates. There, there are some stars that are going to go like this and then maybe go through this region. They pulsate. Uh, they're called Miro variables. Now, here is why these ones are kind of important to us. There's a relationship between how many days it takes them to pulsate and how bright they are. Okay. So these guys, the ones that are here, the Cepheid variables, they're going to be over here. They're going to be very bright and big. When you go over, when you go down, it takes them a lot of number of days to pulsate. Okay? They pulsate very slowly, very slowly. Okay? These ones here are around the middle here. And you go and you go down, they take maybe one day, two day, three days, so they pulsate quicker. Okay, so think about it, the easiest way to remember, think about the heartbeat of mice versus the heartbeat of dog versus the heartbeat of humans versus the heartbeat of an elephant and the heartbeat of a whale. Okay, which one has the quickest heartbeat? The smaller the animal, right? The, the mice, the rat. Maybe a thousand beats per minute, right? It's got to beat very, very fa a lot of times because its heart is very small. It can't pump a lot of blood uh, at a time, right? The whale or the elephant, it's like boom, boom, you know, maybe 10 beats per minute. Human is somewhere in the middle, 60 beats per minute, 70 beats per minute, you know. So the star is like that too. The big stars pulsate very slowly. It takes a lot of days for them to pulsate. The middle stars pulsate quicker. The shorter, the light ones pulsate even quicker. So there's a, a relationship that we can establish there. And then this explains what's causing them to pulsate. Radiation partially trapped, pressure increases. See, when the radiation is trapped, pressure increases, overcomes star's gravity, and makes it inflate. So then it inflates. Expansion allows trapped radiation to escape. Star cools and pressure decreases. Gravity now compresses star back to original size. And then cycle begins again. So something is causing it to become unstable. Uh, this picture is also nice. Uh, it shows to us a, another human analogy of this. When you have a pot of water boiling in a pot, uh, right? And then you get to a certain point where it's starting to boil and releases gas. What happens to the cover? The cover kind of rises, right? To allow the pressure of the boiling steam to come out. So the pot, the cover rises. And then what happens? It goes back down after the pressure is released. So then it goes back up. So the, 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 the cover can come up, go down, come up, go down. So it's kind of like the star's pulsation, another analogy of that. So what did we say the analogy of this is? Massive and brighter stars pulsate slowly, like the beat of an elephant, whale, right? Light and dim stars pulsate rapidly, like the mouse, ding, 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 you know? So, 
Low mass stars become what are known as RR Lyra variables and have pulsation periods 0.3 to roughly one day. And our sun will most likely end up as a RR Lyra variable. Medium mass stars become type 2 cepheid variables and have a pulsation period slower, you see, 1 to 30 days, roughly. Heavy mass stars become type 1 cepheids, or all otherwise known as classical cepheid variables, and have a period of 30 to 100 days. So the, the bigger the period, that means it's pulsating very slowly. It's taking 30 to 100 days to pulsate. Meyer variables pulsate about one year. OK, now, in what sense are these important to us? The Meyer, uh, the Meyer variables, RR Lyer variables, all these variables. They can act as one way of telling distances to galaxies. They're called distance indicators, OK? Distance to, to stars, distance to galaxies. When we talked about lecture one way, way back when the start semester began, I told you that the concept of parallax, you know, when a thumb is close to you, when a thumb is far, the concept of parallax can act as a way to tell distances to stars. That's a one distance indicator, okay? But it only works for galaxies that are close to you, stars that are close to you. So it's, it's a distance indicator, but for small distances. Supernovas are also distance indicators. Doppler redshift is also a um, distance indicator. And we're going to talk about that when we get to lecture 13, because Hubble used the Doppler redshift on galaxies to tell the distances to galaxies. Okay. And variable stars, also known as pulsating stars, these ones, they're also distance indicators. So here is roughly what we do to use them as a distance indicator. <clears throat> so here is how variable stars can be used to find distances to galaxies. Observe its pulsation period. So let's say you have a galaxy. We don't know how far away this galaxy is. We want to find the distance to it. So you keep looking, you keep looking. Oh, finally you see a star that's pulsating in there. OK, so now observe its pulsation period. Let's say you determine it's pulsating once every 30 days. Using that graph that I showed you, you can now determine how bright that star must be. So it's a predictable graph. So observe its pulsation period. From that graph, ascertain its absolute luminosity. Find out what its luminosity is. Then find out how luminous that star appears to you. What is its apparent luminosity, right? So using its pulsation period, you can know how bright it is. Using equipment that you have, known as a photometer, you can determine how bright the star appears. OK? Well, once you know how bright it is, and once you know how bright it appears, then you can use several formulas we have, such as, remember the formula? Apparent luminosity, absolute luminosity, over distance squared. If you know apparent and you know absolute, you can find out the distance. Okay? We're not really going to do equations with this other than just what I explained to you. Uh, you can find out it's apparent by using an instrument. You can find out it's absolute by observing its pulsation. And then you can determine its distance, and it can act as a distance indicator. So they're very, very useful to tell distances.